link to Denise, Skull, Skull Snuff, Skull Pen, Hawkins Chew, Sirius Dog Star, Dan Star, Terra Stero. Behold, I am going to rebuke your offspring, and I will spread refuse on your faces, and there fuse of your feasts, and you will be taken away with it. We have already seen how God provides for the needs of the priests when they offer a sacrifice. They must first offer up the fat as an offering to God. The one making the sacrifice receives a portion of the sacrificial meat to be eaten with his family. The priest is to be given the breast to the right thigh. This is the way the law of Moses spells it out. But it is not the way it is done by the priests. These men did not know the Lord, and neither did they know the customs of the priests. These sons, who did not know the Lord, are called the sons of Belial, worthless men. And Dan is called Belial, personification of the devil. It is very interesting to note that while Eli's sons are called sons of Belial, Eli's hasty assessment and rebuke of Hannah suggests to him that she is a daughter of Belial, a charge she denies. But... We all know she's guilty. Look at the smile on her face. That is definitely a daughter of Belly also. Um, yes, uh, you know, I think maybe God has a more of a sense of humor than that. And, uh, Hannah, I, I, had a, I had a case where I used to call Hannah Banana. You know, Hannah is my favorite. Uh, I really like Hannah. She's the mother of Samuel and Samuel Jackson. I call him the Dark Pope, you know, because Pope, or sorry, the dark prophet Samuel, because Samuel was called a son of the personification of the devil with his brothers, and uh, they did not like who he was choosing to be king. If you look at the two sons of Sam, actually there's three, David Berkowitz, son of Sam, and then there was King David, the son of Sam, because his own father was not his father, really. It was, it was his, own, his own father didn't want much to do with him and kept him out of the house. It was, it was Sam that raised him and made him king, and, uh, and then if you look at, uh, Saul, he was the first son of Sam, uh, where did, where did any of these sons of Sam, uh, I mean, let me tell you one thing, people think King Saul was so bad, and they say King David was a man after God's own heart, I mean, women were singing about the reason why King David is so much better is because size matters, and the kill count was the size that matters. Uh, he kills ten times more people. He kills tens of thousands, and Saul kills, you know, his thousands, and that's what makes King David so much more cool. And I think maybe Saul had a reason to be a little ticked about that, you know, because it's one thing to be jealous, and yes, he was jealous, but uh, that's a different, that's actually something you, you know, a, jealous, a type of jealousy, uh, because it's not right that, uh, he is getting so much praise and adoration from the women based off of uh, how much blood he is shedding, okay? And King David had his right-hand man, uh, you know, killed so that he could get away with sleeping with his wife, okay? Most atheists would not do that. And King David was the most spoiled of all of the kings, the most loved and the most pampered and the most adored of all of the kings. I mean, King Solomon kind of for a period of time, but you know, later on, King Solomon, uh, God didn't like him very much and neither did a lot of the kingdom. So whereas King David, to this day, he's, he's, he's treated like he's this great, great hero and righteous person, whereas King Solomon actually is not. Um, I've, I've heard terrible things about King Solomon from people that that love king david and 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 love the scriptures that that say they they don't even think king solomon made it to heaven so uh but but uh, it's just amazing because king david did so many terrible things that even an atheist wouldn't do and it's it's a much worse sin if it's coming from somebody who has been given a whole bunch of grace from god who is a prophet of god who has been made king by god and who knows God is watching his every step and has his back and has so much reason to, to uh, while, while so many people are suffering, you know, total spiritual poverty because God has his favorites and, 
you know, he, the others he leaves in the dark. You know, here's this spoiled guy that's got eight wives and concubines and sex slaves. He, he, he decides he needs to go knock over this other dude's wife and then have this very holy man killed to get away with it. Uh, that's a much worse sin coming from someone like King David than it would be coming from almost anybody else at that time. So, um, I don't see how in the world people think he was uh, better than Saul. And in fact, Saul, you know, Samuel for one, uh, maybe, maybe King David was a man after God's own heart, but uh, I think Saul was a man after Samuel's own heart because, you know, he came from a tribe that was really despised, you know, it considered the least. It was a tribe that the, was picked on a lot. It was the tribe where all of the women got exterminated. Uh, all of the women got exterminated for a crime that a man committed against a concubine when he chopped her up and mailed her to a bunch of different places. And yet it was the tribe where the women were like the greatest heroes, you know? You had Queen Esther, uh, an orphan who was taking a, the, a big risk that no men were taking accomplishing a miracle that Jesus wouldn't have been able to work in Iran, preventing a genocide against the Jews in Iran that still protects Jewish synagogues and Jewish houses of prayer and the Persian Jews to this day in Iran, which is an extremely anti-Semitic country, the greatest enemy of the Jewish state. They still have to, by law, even if they make, even if some people break that law, they still have to protect the Jewish communities and houses of worship in Iran. They would never do that in Saudi Arabia. They would never do that in uh, Syria. They would never do that in uh, um, uh, freaking, I, I don't know about Lebanon, because Lebanon's more, it got so many Christians, but uh, they would never do that in Pakistan. Um, I don't know, I mean, I'm, you know what I get. I mean, I, I don't know what Iraq is like now, because I, I bet they, you know, there was a time where America's occupying Iraq and it's, it's a little better, but now I think Iraq's probably not like some place you could have a synagogue now, and Afghanistan neither. Uh, so, but but Iran is, and the reason for that is, is because uh, Queen Esther used very unconventional means like prostitution and lying and eating food that was unkosher to cover the uh, her identity as a Hebrew to uh, um, inspire Cyrus who uh, made it just as safe to be a Jew in Israel as to be a Jew in Babylon and creates the temple and is hailed by God as the Messiah, the savior of Abrahamic monotheism, which would have almost gone extinct, uh, become as insignificant as, as the Aztec and Indian religions are insignificant to, to the world today, where they used to be so incredibly uh, popular with those big pyramids and, and s they used to be everything. and. Uh, they, uh, in these great empires in America, now they are nothing. That's what would have happened to Abrahamic monotheism if uh, Cyrus the Great did not invest so much into saving us. We had a pagan save, a pagan polytheist that scripture is always bashing as worshipping devils. Well, the devil saved you, okay? The devil saved Abrahamic monotheism. And uh, that wasn't the first time. If you think that if you think pagan gods are devils, that would mean Pharaoh was a devil, and Pharaoh saved, uh, gave Joseph control of his household and possessions, respected Joseph so much, told everybody, go to Joseph, that becoming a slave to Pharaoh was the greatest thing that ever happened to Joseph, and the best thing that ever happened to the only superpower in the world and all the surrounding nations, and uh, yeah. So, um, that pharaoh was like nicer to Joseph than like, than, uh, than, uh, than uh, is, is God very nice? I don't think God would have been very nice to him, honestly. I mean, God was killing people for working on Sabbath. Did the, did the Egyptians kill people for silly things like that? And God would kill 70,000 people for a, a census that he didn't like and killing the firstborn of Egypt and the babies of Egypt because they don't have blood smeared on their doorposts and stuff. I mean... Uh, so, so no, I think uh, I think sometimes the pagan deities are, are going to be way, way, way nicer and way more rational and way more kind than the God of Abraham, and and maybe that's what the the God of Abraham needs to learn a few lessons. Uh, 
from them, okay? And, and maybe we should not be telling him everything he does is okay. God bless.